All right, folks, welcome to day 19. I'm calling this episode Routes Reloaded, like the Matrix, but not as cool. Definitely not as cool. All right, so let's see. I have one, two, three, four, four or five different uh, tips or techniques that are uniquely related to your routes file. So think of it like this. We are taking a broom to that routes file and you're going to enjoy it. So let's get started. Okay, first up is route model binding. So work along, open your routes file and scroll down to this show action here. All right, let's have a look. We are listening for a get request to jobs slash some kind of identifier. We then capture that ID. It is passed to the closure here, and we then use that to fetch the corresponding job from the database. Great. But as you can imagine, this is something you will do over and over and over within your projects. And luckily, Laravel has a shorthand of sorts. Uh, it can fetch the model instance for you automatically if you follow a common convention. So here's what we'll do. I'm going to comment this out temporarily. And for the wildcard, I'm going to change it to job, something a little more generic. Fetch me the job. Uh, and you can use an ID, and the default is an ID, but often it might be a slug or some other kind of unique uh, token or string. All right, so now I'm going to change the ID variable to match that. So job, job, they're the same. Okay, next I'm going to add a type. I expect a job instance. All right, so is it that simple? Let's get rid of this, uncomment this line, and see if it works. Let's have a look at carpet installer. This is the show action, and yeah, it works exactly the way it did before. I mean, come on, how cool is that? All right, so what is the convention? Well, it's twofold. First up, your wildcard and the parameter name need to be identical. So notice job and job. Next, we add a type to the parameter. And this is a signal to Laravel that, hey, I'm not expecting the string that's in the URI. I want an actual instance of job. Okay, so now Laravel sees that and it goes, all right, I'm going to give you a job. But which one? Which, which identifier from the database? Well, these match. So whatever this wildcard is uh, represents the ID in the database. And of course, if you need to, you can configure that. So for example, very quickly, uh, let's imagine you have a blog. Well, often the identifier for a post isn't the ID. It's some kind of unique slug. So in these situations, you can add a colon and then the name of the column that should be the identifier. So if I want you to find the post from the database where the slug equals this value, then I would use colon slug. Or I could do this, or this is the default. So I could leave it off entirely. All right. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Next, we can update any other references within our routes file. Here's another one. So let's do it together. All right, update the wildcard in the parameter to be job. Next, I apply a type, and then I can remove this manual fetching there. All right, next up, update the exact same thing. Job, job, and then I don't need this anymore. And also, by the way, authorize is actually something you would do at the very beginning, and then you validate. All right, finally, we have this one here. Job, job, and then this section right here can change to job, delete. All right, let's do a quick run through just to make sure we didn't break anything. So we have all jobs, have a look at construction manager, edit that job, uh, let's say senior construction manager, is that a thing? Update it, that looks good. Mm -hmm. Let's delete one. All right, that one's gone. Yeah, everything's working exactly the way it did before. Good job. All right, let's switch back and move on to tip number two. So what we have here is just fine and dandy uh, for relatively simple projects. But as you can imagine, if you're building a very large application that has potentially hundreds of routes, pretty quickly this becomes unwieldy. I mean, we're just dealing with jobs at this point, and it's already quite a bit of scrolling. So instead, what I think you'll find is for, for most non-trivial applications, developers reach for dedicated controller classes. And we'll do that now. PHP Artisan make a controller, and I can then apply a name right here. Or if I omit it, Laravel will ask me a handful of questions. All right, what should the controller be named? Well, generally, it will be job or jobs, whatever convention you want to follow, and then controller. 
All right, next, what kind of controller do you want? Should it be an empty class? Should it be a resource? We're going to put a pin in that because I'll show you that later. A singleton, API, or invocable, which is like a single a single action controller. Uh, if that's confusing, just add empty for now. Let's now open app HTTP controllers, and there we go. And yeah, notice it's an empty class because we told it to be empty. Okay, so here's the cool thing. I'm going to open up a split pane and then return to my routes file. And notice how we applied these action names above every route uh, an episode or two ago. I'm now going to convert those to methods like this. Method index, one for create, one for show. And yeah, I'm, I'm just going down the list here. One for store, one for edit, one for update, and finally, one for uh, destroy, as you see there. Cool. So now I want to say, well, listen for a get request to slash jobs, but don't run a closure. Instead, call the corresponding action within this controller. So here the action is index. So I want to trigger this method right here. Okay. What I'm going to do is add die and dump hello for a sanity check. And then I will comment this out and replace it with our new version. Route get jobs. And then I will provide an array here. The first item will be the controller class. So I can say job controller class. And yeah, of course, if you want, you can simplify and import that at the top of the file. All right, the next item will be the name of the action that we want Laravel to call. In this case, it's index. And that should do it. So yeah, if I visit slash jobs, if we did everything correctly, I should die and dump hello. Come back, refresh, and it works. Pretty cool and not too hard to implement. So now think about it. Let's uncomment this out. All I have to do is take the contents of this closure and move it over into this new uh, home. And then I can delete this entirely. Okay, next, I, of course, will import the job class. All right, so now, yeah, we've done our first successful migration from a route closure to a dedicated controller action. And that's the term we would use to describe each one of these. They are actions on the controller. Come back, refresh, and it works. So cool. Okay, now I will go down the list and update all of these, and I'll do it a little bit quicker. So for the create action, I can cut and paste that in. For the show action, once again, cut, paste it in. But what about this section here? Can I just move that over? And the answer is, yep, you got it. All right, get rid of that. All right, next, store action. I will cut all of that, paste it in. What else? We have edit, add our type. And then update, yeah, a little bit tedious, but it's just for demonstration. All right, job, job. And then finally, we have destroy. All right, very cool. So our controller is looking good. I will close that out. And then I just want to update all of these other routes. So I can say we have job controller class. This time we're calling the create action. Okay. And what I'll do here is select all of that so I can save myself some time. All right, paste it in. This one is show. This one is store. This one is edit. And this one is update. And finally, we have destroy. Yeah, a little bit cleaner, don't you think? Definitely easier to reason about and scroll. Okay, so now I can get rid of all of these comments. That's redundant. And this is what we get. Now it's crystal clear that these are the routes related to our jobs. And also, by the way, I can get rid of this job import. Okay, number three, route view. So often you will have situations where you listen for a GET request and in response, you do nothing else except load a view. And yeah, this is especially common for uh, static pages like a contact page or an about us page. So in these situations, Laravel has a small shorthand. I can replace this with route view. I provide the URI and then I reference the view it should load like this. So this and this are effectively identical. It's just it's just a shorthand. 
I can do the exact same thing here. Route, view, contact, and contact. Get rid of it. And yeah, nothing will change here. It all still works, which is pretty cool. But sure, sanity check. Here's your home page. Here's your contact page. You're all set. Cool. That was a short one. Next, number four, listing your routes. Now, what we have here is fine and simple, but of course, for real projects, the size of your routes file will grow significantly. Uh, you'll have dozens and dozens or potentially hundreds of routes. So for this reason, Laravel has a helpful artisan command called route list. And as you can guess, this will list all of the routes in your application, but it is unique. Notice if I scroll up, here's all of my jobs, here's contact. But then I also see some routes related to third-party packages like Ignition and Debug Bar. And yeah, this might be helpful, but generally you can avoid these or ignore them. So if you want, you can say route list except vendor. Show me all of the routes except the ones that were defined within my vendor folder. And this is what I get. And this is really what I care about. Homepage, contact, and then the jobs resource that consists of seven actions. And yeah, it's really helpful. We have the request type, we have the URI, and then way over here, we have the controller that is responsible for handling it. Pretty helpful. Okay, so that brings us to our next tip. Notice here for the resource, I keep repeating that controller name. Job controller, job controller, and job controller. And yeah, there's no real problem here, but if you want to remove just a touch of duplication, you can define it once and then group all of these routes under that single reference. And here's how. I can say route controller, job controller, then group, and then I provide a closure here. So I'm creating a route group where all of them will assume this controller. And then I can move all of these within it. Okay, so now the only remaining step is to, of course, remove the controller reference. I will use multiple cursors for this. Select all of them, delete, look for the closing array, and delete that as well. And yeah, maybe uh, you might decide this is a little cleaner. So can we confirm this works? Well, let's switch back to the command line, run it again, and if we did everything correctly, it should look identical to the way it did before. And it does. Notice they all refer to job controller. All right, very cool. But now that brings us to our next technique, which is route resource. So yeah, multiple times in this video, I have used that term resource to represent this collection here of actions. So as it turns out, Laravel has its own dedicated route resource method. I'll show you how to use it. The first argument will be the resource name. Uh, this will also be the URI, in this case, jobs. The next argument is the controller that is responsible for it, job controller. Okay, so check this out. If I comment out this line here and I rerun route list, notice I get the exact same thing because that's what route resource does. It registers all of the routes for a typical restful or resourceful controller. And notice the convention that we're following here. If I didn't have any of these here and I just had an empty controller, if I run route list, I still see that it's going to assume and default to these action names. And yeah, on that note, this is specifically why I've tried to be crystal clear about these action names over the last few episodes. And it's also why we added a little comment above each route declaration two episodes ago. But yeah, if you can't, if you can't remember them, you got to do it. Just practice. Close your eyes and say them out loud. Index, show, create, store, edit, update, destroy, index, show. Just do it over and over until it rolls off your tongue. Okay, now I have one final extension to route resource. What we have here is helpful, but often you don't need to generate or register all seven resourceful routes. Instead, you only need maybe a handful. So for this reason, you can pass an array as the third item. Now you have a couple options here. You could specify only the actions that you want it to generate or register, or you could do the inverse, accept. Do all of the default ones except such and such. So maybe we decide we don't actually need an edit action in this case. I could say generate a resource except edit. Now, notice we have it right here, but if I run it again, it disappears. We have all of the routes except edit. On the other hand, if I swap this out with only, 
maybe we only need index, show, create, and store, but there is no option to delete or update. Now, if I switch back and run it again, you can see we have only four uh, corresponding actions. All right, so that's all of the routing specific tips that I have for you at this stage in your learning. So now let's get prepped for the following episode. I do want all of these actions, so I will simplify it. Route controller is very useful, but we don't need it in this case. So now I will move my route view calls at the top. We have one for home, one for contact, and then a resource for jobs. And that resource will be handled by a dedicated controller class. All right, that's a wrap. Now, before I let you go, one final note. I really do hope as much as possible you are working along with each of these videos. It's one thing to watch me type it out, but trust me, when you are responsible for each character, uh, it makes a mountain of difference in terms of what you retain and remember. Okay, that's it. In the next episode, we will start a new chapter, which is authentication. I'll see you then.